Let us bring in Dr. Byram Bridal. He's an associate professor of viral immunology at the University of Guelph. Doctor, you've been very, um, you know, uh, very open um, on this whole issue. And, and, you know, you're not an anti-vaxxer by any stretch. But what do you think about this inflammation in the heart? And, and is, is it an actual threat? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Alex. Uh, yeah, as you said, I'm very much pro-vaccine, but always making sure that the science is done properly and that we follow the science carefully before going into uh, you know, public rollout of vaccines. Um, I, I hope you run. Let me run with this a little bit, Alex. I'll, I'll provide. I, I, I can. I, I, I'll forewarn you and your, your listeners that um, the story I'm about to tell is is a bit of a scary one. Um, this is cutting edge science. Uh, there's a couple of key um, pieces of scientific information that have become privy to just within the past few days that has uh, made the final link. Uh, to, so we understand now, myself and some key co- international collaborators, we understand exactly why these problems are happening and, and many others associated with these vaccines. And the story is a bit of a scary one. So just to brace you for this, but I'm going to walk you through this. The, the science that, that I'm going to be talking about. Um, I don't have the time here to describe exactly the scientific data, but let me assure you that everything that I'm stating here, or that I'm going to state right now, is completely backed up by peer-reviewed scientific publications in uh, well-known and uh, well-respected scientific journals. I have all of this information uh, in hand. I'm in the process of mildly trying to put it all into uh, a, a document that I can ho- hopefully circulate widely, so your listeners are going to be the first to hear the public release of this conclusion. And I'll, I can Sounds back very it up ominous. with science. <laughs> so this is what it is. Okay. The SARS coronavirus 2 has a spike protein on its surface. That spike protein is what allows it to infect our bodies. That is why we've been using the spike protein in our vaccines. The vaccines we're using get our cells in our body to manufacture that protein. If we can mount an immune response against that protein, in theory, we, we can prevent this virus from infecting the body. That's the theory behind the vaccine. However, when studying the disease, severe COVID-19, everything that you've just described, heart problems, lots of problems with the cardiovascular system, bleeding and clotting is all associated with severe COVID-19. And looking and, and doing that research, what has been discovered by a scientific community is the spike protein on its own is almost entirely responsible for the damage to the cardiovascular system if it gets into circulation. Indeed, if you inject the, the purified spike protein into the blood of research animals, they get all kinds of damage to the cardiovascular system. It can cross the blood-brain barrier and cause damage to the brain. Now, at first glance, that doesn't seem too concerning because we're injecting these vaccines into the shoulder muscle. The assumption, all up until now, has been that these vaccines behave like all of our traditional vaccines, that they don't go anywhere other than the injection site. So they stay in our shoulder, Some of the protein will go to the local draining lymph node in order to activate the immune system. However, this is where the cutting edge science has come in, and this is where it gets scary. Um, Through a request for uh, information from the Japanese regulatory agency, myself and several international collaborators have been able to get access to what's called a biodistribution study. It's the first time ever that uh, scientists have been privy to seeing where these messenger RNA vaccines go after vaccination. In other words, is it a safe assumption that it stays in the shoulder muscle? The short answer is absolutely not. It's uh, very disconcerting. The spike protein gets into the blood, circulates through the blood in individuals uh, over several days post-vaccination. It accumulates, once it gets in the blood, it accumulates in a number of tissues such as the spleen, the bone marrow, uh, the liver, the adrenal glands. Uh, one that's of particular concern for me is uh, it accumulates at quite high concentrations in the ovaries. And, um, and then also a publication that was just accepted for uh, a, a scientific paper, just accepted for publication uh, that, that backs this up, looked at 13 uh, young healthcare workers that had received the Moderna vaccine, right, which is the other messenger RNA-based vaccine we have in Canada, and they, they confirmed this. They found the spike protein in circulation, so in the blood of 11 of those 13 healthcare workers that had received the vaccine. Uh, what this means is, so we have known for a long time that the spike protein is a pathogenic protein. It is a toxin. It can cause damage in our body if it gets into circulation. Now we have clear-cut evidence that the vaccines that make our bodies, or the muscles, or the cells in our, in our deltoid muscles, right, manufacture this protein, 
not the vaccine itself plus the protein gets into blood circulation. When in circulation, the spike protein can bind to the receptors that are on our platelets and the cells that line our blood vessels. When that happens, it can do one of two things. It can either cause platelets to clump and that can lead to clotting. That's exactly why we've been seeing clotting disorders associated with these vaccines. It can also lead to bleeding. And of course, the heart's involved. It's part, a key part of the cardiovascular mm -hmm. system. That's why we're seeing heart problems. The protein, it can also cross the blood-brain barrier and cause neurological damage. That's why also in the fatal cases of blood clots, many times it's seen in the brain. And uh, also of concern is um, there's also evidence of a, of a study. This has not yet been accepted for publication yet, this one. They were trying to show that the antibodies from the vaccine get transferred through breast milk. And the idea was this may be a good thing because it prefer, would confer some passive protection to babies. However, what they found inadvertently was that the, the uh, vaccines, the messenger RNA vaccines, actually get transferred through the breast milk. It was delivering the vaccine vector itself uh, into infants that are breastfeeding. Also, with this, now we know the spike protein gets into circulation. Any proteins in the blood will get concentrated in breast milk. Looking into the adverse event database in the United States, we have found evidence of suckling infants experiencing bleeding disorders in the gastrointestinal tract. So, okay, let me pause you there because I've only got about 45 seconds left. I mean, the bottom line, this sure. will scare a lot of people. I'll, I'll, I'll this wrap will it up. freak this a lot of people important, out. This, yeah. this message, yes. Yeah. So, so this has implications for blood donation. Right now, Canadian Blood, mm -hmm. Canadian blood Services is saying people that who have been vaccinated can donate. We don't want transfer of these uh, pathogenic spike proteins to fragile patients who are being tra uh, transfused with that blood. This has implications for uh, infants that are suckling. And this, this has serious implications for people for whom SARS coronavirus 2 is not a high risk pathogen and that includes all of our children. In short, the conclusion is we made a big mistake. We didn't realize it until now. We thought the spike protein was a great target antigen. We never knew the spike protein itself was a toxin and was a pathogenic protein. So by vaccinating people, we are inadvertently inoculating them with a toxin in some people, this gets into circulation, and when that happens in some people, it can cause damage, especially to the cardiovascular system. And I have many other, I don't have time, but many mm -hmm. other legitimate questions about the long-term safety, therefore, of this vaccine. Right. For example, with it accumulating in the ovaries, one of my questions is, will we be rendering young people infertile, some of them infertile? So I'll stop there. Okay. I know it's heavy heading, but I have, I well, I'm up against the out. clock. I need like an hour when I talk to you because you you have so much information, and of course you're you're one opinion of many. But you know it's interesting because you have a, a different look at it, and certainly the uh, time will tell on this. But we'll have you on again um, because I always get an interesting and different perspective from you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, it was my pleasure. Take care. That is a uh, Doctor Bridal, who a lot of you uh, like and like to hear. And again, uh, that's his findings. Again, we get lots of different medical opinions. Um, that'll scare a lot of people. But there are a lot of people already who don't trust uh, the vaccines given this.